PHL 17 presents In Focus, a look at the issues affecting the Philadelphia region. Now your host, Steve Highsmith. More jobs are being created in the Philadelphia region, but still many people remain unemployed or underemployed. A new effort has begun to provide opportunity to people and connect employers and potential employees. Good morning, I'm Steve Highsmith and welcome to In Focus. The unemployment rate in Philadelphia is around 7%. The rate can be a point or more higher in some parts of the region, such as about 8% in Salem County, or it can be lower, such as below 4% in Chester County. The most recent American Community Survey estimates that more Philadelphia adults, nearly twice as many, do not have a high school diploma than the state average. The survey found that nearly 16% of Philadelphia adults do not have a high school diploma, compared to 8.5% of Pennsylvania residents. But the nonprofit Philadelphia Works has been evolving to address this job crisis. It invests in employment and job training solutions, it connects employers and job seekers, and ensures accountability in the process. Well, what does it know about how to find the right job and the right person? Where can you turn for this kind of help. With me now are Mark Edwards, President and Chief Operating Officer of Philadelphia Works, and Jay Spector, President and CEO of Jeb's Human Services. Thank you both for being here. Appreciate what you do and for taking the time to be with us this morning. Thank you, Steve. How would you describe, Jay, the, the job-seeking environment in the Philadelphia region today? Well, I think that the job-seeking environment, although it's improving, uh, is still leaving out many of the populations that you described. Uh, individuals who uh, do not have the credentials for the jobs of the 21st century. And, uh, and so one of our biggest challenges is really trying to provide some level of support uh, to get them to that level where they can not only apply for that first job, but get on the right path to a, to a career and life-sustaining position. Does Philadelphia Works see it pretty much the same way? Yes, yeah, see, we do. First of all, I'm, um, I'm, I'm the chief executive officer of Philadelphia Works, and I, and I would, I would cer certainly agree with Jay. In fact, what we're doing to address that uh, challenge is working with more and more employers to find ways to be creative, to connect employers to job seekers that have the skills needed to fill some of the open jobs that they have. More and more you hear employers say in the context of the some of the stats that you threw out that they have jobs available but there aren't people available to fill those jobs and so we're working with employers to engage in creative non-traditional ways to help fill the gap so that they can connect with some of the job seekers to fill the jobs that they have available and we're doing that in, in ways that we think are responsive to the demands that the employers articulate. Are you influenced by by the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, the, the federal act? Yeah, that's a new act uh, that will come into effect as of July, of this, this, this coming July, July 1st, 2015, and the entire workforce development community nationwide is required to begin to shift in that direction. And so what that means for Philadelphia is that much of the work that we've done over the last two years to implement new priorities to guide the work that we're doing has really positioned us well to be in alignment with the new act. So it means, for example, that um, the workforce and the economic development efforts that the city is engaged in will now be um, delivered in a way that's purposeful and that has been planned in advance as opposed to an afterthought working and connecting the public workforce system with small businesses, many of whom don't have the HR systems that larger companies have, will be prioritized in our work in ways that it has not been uh, in the past. And those are just some examples. Well, give an example of why that's new, though. You would think that we would have been doing that for decades, mm -hmm. trying right. to connect people in an efficient manner. What's critically different about this? Well, just okay. to jump in for a second on that, you know, one of the things is that there are so many multiple funding streams. We call them silos. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the problems has been um, you may come in to um, look for a job in one facility and then find, well, you're not eligible for those services. Um, and maybe a different funding stream would be where you need to be sent to. Uh, and so what we're starting to see that is different is at the federal, state, and the local level, that greater integration, the trying to break down those silos so that somebody can come into a true one-stop center uh, where we can service them, uh, regardless of the funding that they may be entitled to or not. And so uh, that really is the hallmark of why the Philadelphia CareerLink system 
uh, has changed into this integrated system. So the career link is the key key word or phrase in this whole thing. Car yeah. Career link yes. system. So explain career link. So if you live in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and you lose your job through no fault of your own, you're required to go online or to go into a physical location and register so that the government knows that not only do you want to collect your unemployment benefits, but you're also seeking a job. And you can do that in Philadelphia County in one of the career links that we that we have here um, in Philadelphia. And you can find the career link by going to our website at www.philaworks.org or you can contact our office at 215-963-2100. And you can get a range of employment and training services that allows you to qualify to meet the state's requirements to continue to get your benefit as well as prepare for jobs and meet job and meet employers who are looking to, to hire people. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but career link has been around for a while, mm -hmm. but we're talking about an evolutionary step being taken with CareerLink and, right. and these new integrated centers that are going on that are talking mm -hmm. about what Jay's talking about, about having access to all these silos and all the information so that you can better connect people. Is that correct? That's correct, but let me just put uh, a little more context to it. So the CareerLink Center is what I just described. Somebody loses their job through no fault of their own. They go into any one of these centers. And we have, uh, there are 22 counties in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that have, uh, that represent local workforce areas. Areas. And each of those 22 counties have their version of a career link that represents that county. So in Philadelphia, we have four of them here in the city of Philadelphia. But at the same time, there's a separate system called the EARN Center. And any TANF client or somebody who gets cash assistance from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, in order for them to continue to qualify to get that cash assistance, they have to go into an EARN Center. So as Jay pointed out a moment ago, different funding streams. So you go into one set of centers if you lose your job through no fault of your own and, you're, and, and another set of, 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 uh, of centers if you are getting cash assistance from the state. And so what this initiative does is it blends the two together in an integrated fashion so that it doesn't matter what your income or what your background, your educational or job experience is. You go into one center, There's the, the notion is it's a no wrong door approach. Mm -hmm. It's helpful to the job seekers because they don't have to try to figure out where they have to go. They go to one place. It's helpful to employers because the same thing holds true for employers. They go to one place to get services to help fill the jobs that they have available. So to be clear then on something else as we talk about people who are you know, waiting in line to get jobs and filling out forms and doing all of those things and seeking a job, whether they've just lost one, whether they've been out of work for a long time, or whether they just got out of prison after serving their time and they're trying or they're a new immigrant to this country, whatever it is, they have these 22 counties that they've had some access of information, as you said, sometimes in different silos. But th we are beginning to see more of these new level career link centers being created, right? Yeah. And we have one is right now, is that correct? That's correct. So across the Commonwealth, uh, out of the 22 local workforce areas in the Commonwealth, about half of them, about 11 of them, have some form of co-location where those two centers share a roof or what we do here in Philadelphia, integration, where we actually blend the services. Here in Philadelphia, um, we are moving toward a, a complete system of integration. So it doesn't matter which center you go into, it'll be a comprehensive center, fully integrated, offering the complete range of services that are available to job seekers um, across the entire city of Philadelphia. So we're gonna have what, at least four or five of those? We're gonna have a total of four. One just came online in April and the other four will be coming online between now and December of this so year. So the one in the 1600 block of JFK Boulevard is operational? That's operational. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna have one in South Southwest Philadelphia, we're going to have one in the lower northeast, for example, and they're going to be spread out geographically, okay. one in the northwest. Correct, correct. All right, so the, so the people don't have to go all go to Center City, but right now they can go to Center City and correct. start taking advantage of this at 16, 17, I believe, JFK. Yes, 16, right? 17, JFK. Second Boulevard. floor. Second floor. There you go. <laughs> and we'll give the, the web addresses and other information okay. as the program progresses, yeah. so if you want to follow up on that. But I want to bring up something, and that is that you also have partners. And, and mm -hmm. Jay is here in part because Jeb's Human Services for many, many years has been helping people. And in this new integrated career link center, 
plan, there are going to be key service providers, and there's Circo and Impact Services Corporation, and Nueva Esperanza will be coming online. But Jeff's Human Services mm -hmm. is at the forefront of this already. So, how do you see yourself, in, you know, being integrated in this? Well, we're really excited about this opportunity, and uh, we have been operating an Earn Center for many years, uh, and so it was a natural evolution for us to uh, engage in the Career Link system as well. Uh, so we're excited that we're the you know first online and uh, and are working on uh, this already since the beginning of April. Uh, are you seeing a difference? Well, it, yeah, there's a lot of difference, especially around customer service. So when you come into the new Career Link Center, uh, you are welcomed. Uh, and uh, and that's a very positive image that we're trying to create. Uh, people coming in are down on their luck for whatever reason, and so when they come into a career link center, we want them to come in and feel good about themselves, to start feel like there is hope uh, that uh, they will be able to gain some skills, gain a job, uh, go on to school um, if necessary to learn a, a new skill. So it's a total different feel. You are welcomed in and then you proceed to actually having a one-on-one -on -one short interview uh, with one of our advisors. Uh, that personalization didn't really exist uh, in, in the past so we realized that we need to have focus and learn a little bit more about the individual so that we have a better sense of them where to send them for the resources. They get immediate access to what's called the Job Gateway, which is the online system uh, that the state has created that allows the com you know, computer application to go in and basically not only connect to the jobs that we have in our system, but also whatever other positions are out in the um, in the in the uh, you know in, in the state and the Commonwealth and especially in the local region uh, that they can gain access to and then we can help them try to secure those types of jobs. After they reach that point, do they walk out of the building and they never hear from anybody again? Do they have a means of following up? Uh, how does that? So that that varies. I mean, some people come in and they just want that light touch uh, and that connection and you know it may be just going through a couple workshops that we have on resume preparation or job readiness uh, it may be just gaining access to the the job search component of it uh, for others um, it may be more comprehensive and in-depth support that we're providing and some of that's driven by funding as well. Well, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about these workshops, about training, and about employer involvement mm -hmm. in this new process sure. as well, and more and more with Philadelphia Works and Jeb's Human Services and what it means for someone like you or someone you know. How can you get a good job jump started ahead on In Focus on PHL 17? Back on In Focus, I'm Steve Highsmith. We're talking about connecting people to the right training and job opportunities and helping employers find these folks, too. With me are Mark Edwards, who's president and chief executive officer of Philadelphia Works, and Jay Spector, president and CEO of Jeb's Human Services. Thanks again for being here. Sure. So we're talking about this environment we've been in, this job situation mm -hmm. environment we've been in for many, many years, a lot of underemployed and unemployed still, even though things have been getting better. And new programs that are going into effect, a new integration of services that may make it more likely to connect people to jobs but I guess important in that too is teaching people the skills they need getting the training they need where do we work on that I mean do you have workshops mark that you can get people access to yeah we do we have workshops that are available in our career links you can go to our website and actually click on the uh, the website uh, drop button and see a range of workshops that are available to job seekers to help prepare them for jobs and those workshops range from resume writing to specific workshops that have been developed in support of the healthcare industry that to explain HIPAA and other kinds of things that a person would need to know if they're interested in a job in healthcare and many of these workshops have been informed by the employers, the needs of employers, and so employers can be comforted that if people have been referred to them from our system and they can demonstrate that they've attended those workshops, that those job seekers have the basic knowledge they need to understand the entry-level positions that they may be applying for as the workshops apply to those entry-level positions, and that's how we structure the workshop. Anything for ex-offenders? 
Yeah, there are, yeah, there are specific workshops available for ex-offenders or um, and training that's specifically available. We also refer out to other organizations that work with that population specifically. I know that JEVS is an organization, for example, that does specific work with um, ex-offenders, mm -hmm. and we have other providers who do that kind and of work. And what kind of work well. does JEVS do? So we work on a variety of fronts. Uh, mostly, what, one of the things that we do is we work in conjunction with the Philadelphia prison system, uh, and some of the training we do is behind the walls in the prison. But as they're accessing their release, then it's our job to help connect them to other services in the community. And so uh, the mayor has the RISE program, which is uh, his a program to uh, help work with ex-offenders. They can get serviced at a career link center as well. Uh, and as Mark said, there are specialized agencies depending on their their particular needs. Um, and that holds true too with individuals with disabilities and youth who are disconnected, as they describe them. Uh, what about you know, veterans? What do we know about the veteran? Uh, there is a veteran services coordinator at each of the career links so that a veteran can get services there. Um, and um, Is that priority service, Mark? How it is. That's, that? that's a point I was going to make. Uh, we refer to it as a priority of service. Veterans or spouses of veterans could actually, come, when they come into our system, uh, can identify themselves as such or our staff will go through a process to identify whether a person is a veteran or spouse of a veteran. And what that means is uh, regarding workshops that are available available or any other type of service that's available, they go to the front of the line. Well, this is an example of what you mean by trying to develop this outreach in a way that it's more personalized mm -hmm. and individualized to that individual's needs. Correct. Are you trying to target the individual or are you trying to target the employer? Are you trying to fill a job or are you trying to get a person a job? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, and that would, that response would vary depending on who you talk to. And so I'll give you my response, okay. Steve. Um, I often say that if I'm a job seeker and, you're in, and a person is in the business business that I'm in, the best thing you can do for me is to be really clear about the jobs that employers have available and the skills needed to be able to fill those jobs. And so with that perspective, I see our primary client as the employer. Mm -hmm. I really need to understand, our system needs to understand what the employers are facing, where is their, where is their market going, what are the specific jobs do, that they have available, and what are the skills necessary uh, for, that people need to have in order to fill those jobs. And we t then take that information and inform the kind of investments we make in training and we communicate with our partners who deliver services such as JEVS to build a bridge between the employers and the needs that the employer is trying to fill and the job seeker and the, inv and the training investments that we're making in job seekers so that they can be available for those jobs. And I think uh, we have both customers basically, the employer and the client or consumer of our services. Uh, and you know, one of the things is really doing a much better job at matching. I think one of the problems in the past uh, historically has been uh, that um, we didn't understand the dynamics between the employer and the client we were serving. And so we made referrals, we disappointed uh, employers, or we took job orders from employers and didn't make referrals because we didn't have candidates. So we're very careful now on how t we're making it a better match, a better fit. We won't refer people to employers if we don't think they're qualified. And one of the things that we're doing now that is really, I think, unique uh, for our services, Mark, is that um, we're bringing employers actually into the Career Link Center. Uh, we have a program called a basic boot camp, and it's really run by employers who are looking for individuals. Mm -hmm. And in front of them, they get to work with our clients in a classroom and ask questions, uh, get a feel for the individual uh, as they are working with them individually as they see them working in a classroom environment, more team driven, uh, and get a better feel. So when they come out of that, they really have s said to us, okay, well, these three people are people we're interested in. And, and so it's having them play a much more active role. Well, I see those being uh, more efficient. I see you having decades of experience in the nature of our economy and how it works and what the challenges mm -hmm. are. Would I be incorrect, however, to say that it makes sense that we would have given you all the resources you need to do this? Because I get the impression in listening to you and in talking with other people that while our need for this is perhaps the greatest it's been in a long, long time, 
the tools aren't there th to the degree that a lot of people think there are, that the funding for this kind of help, training, workshop, access, education, and connection isn't what it ought to be. Would you agree with that, or are you happy? Oh, um, I would agree with that, I'm certainly. And, you know, our challenge is there will never be enough money and never enough resources. Uh, that's not the environment we're living in, so it's even more critical that we get things like CareerLink correct because we have to figure out how do we best use the government's dollars to get the biggest bang for the buck. All right. Up next, exactly where to turn for help and the first couple of steps for you to take in a moment on PHL 17. getting an update, a snapshot, if you will, of the economy and the career focus our community can have and is trying to have. In Focus continues on PHL 17. I'm Steve Highsmith talking jobs and training and connecting the dots with Mark Edwards and Jay Spector. Mark, you just said something to me during the break that was really interesting. It, that there is an emotional response that people have. Having hope, having confidence in yourself when you're trying to, to get a new job is critically important and you should have a lot of belief in yourself. No matter what you've been through, but you just said that there's a study that yeah. was quite revealing. Yeah, there was a study released out of the United Kingdom uh, that talks about how um, if a person has been unemployed for six months, they have an emotional response to that very similar to the death of a loved one. Mm. And so people who are um, out of work for a sustained period of time go through these ups and downs, and there are a number of things that uh, they can come into our, our one of our centers and get help with to kind of help them battle that. It's important that they get up in the morning, that they have a regular routine, and that the process of looking for a job is treated as if it's a job. It's important that they volunteer. It's important that they connect with their community and stay connected to people on a daily basis who can perhaps um, help them build their skills and, and, and help them network in the job seeking process. And that's one reason why this new integrated approach for CareerLink is important because it is more individualized, it is mm -hmm. more personalized, and it tries to be aware of everything you just laid out. And that's the first step, treating it like it is a job and, and right. trying to find mm -hmm. a job and getting up early and volunteering and staying connected to the community those things. What other first steps can they take to access this kind of help that you might be able to provide? Well, once they come into our center, we get a much better and clearer a sense of what supports they may need. And if I would just pick up with the, the type of client that Mark was just describing, uh, those are individuals, some of them who've been in the workforce 20, 30 years and are finding themselves when they should be at the highest level of their earning capacity, raising a family, uh, finding themselves you know, in financial strife, emotional strife, depression. Uh, and so one of the things that you know, we have to do is to really uh, be able to support all those barriers that they have to employment. Some of them may be skills deficits, but you're still dealing with a lot of individual needs. And by being more personalized in these centers, we get a better sense of where they're at. And that may include referring them to specialists out in the community to help engage them, um, because some of them may need a little bit more work before they're ready to go actually out and sell themselves to an employer. You ever sit back and just say, you know, if I could wave a magic wand, this is the path to a skilled and thriving workforce? What would it be? Uh, I think it's some of the kinds of things that we're doing now, believe it or not. I mean, one of the things I think is noteworthy here is that the system that we're describing, Steve, is not only improved to provide services to job seekers, but it's also improved to provide services to employers. And so those who are in your listening audience who are employers who have jobs that are available, whether they're a small employer or a large or mid-sized employer, it's important that they see this system as, a, as an important service that they could, that they could get access to at no cost. And so some of the things that we're doing now and I think is really interesting is a White House initiative that we've been invited to be a part of, whereby we are working with a specific group of employers who have uh, IT and cybersecurity re security related jobs available within their companies. And those, those jobs historically require a f four year degree and so we're working with them to identify accelerated training programs for well, the job seekers. There's a seekers. lot to find out. In fact, let's just tell people right now where they can find okay. out more and when they 
can find out more, they can go right to your website and get all that they need. Philaworks.org, for example. Uh, the state has a site, cwds.pa.gov, for example. And of course, there's mm -hmm. Jev's Human Services. Dot o -R -G. Thank you great. both for being here. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. That's in okay. focus for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Steve Highsmith. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great weekend.